What just happened to the stock market at 3 p.m. on the 1st of August? Well, we had terrible manufacturing data from the U.S. This is an important number. It's called the ISM manufacturing data. And the scary thing is exactly the same thing happened in 2007. We had terrible manufacturing data. So these figures just here say the U.S. is already in recession. Now, we had the Federal Reserve last night say they weren't going to cut interest rates until September. And remember, there is quite a big lag between cutting rates and the economy feeling the benefit of it. So we're not going to really feel the benefit for the rest of this year. Survey. So if the numbers are under 50, then it means that the economy is retracing. Now, yes, we expected a little bit of a slowdown, but the actual number that came in was poor. But even worse was the employment, right? Those surveyed who were expecting to take on workers in the future, 43 is about as low as these surveys get. Now, as those of you who have been following my page for a while, I have been waiting to get short this S&P. And now today, as of 3 p.m., I am fully short because this was a terrible number. This means that we're getting real earnings downgrades. And this is where the numbers don't lie anymore, okay? All these machines that chase momentum higher and higher and have been doing for about six months now. When we go into recession, the numbers do not lie. We're going to get profit warnings. We're going to get downgrade after downgrade after downgrade, okay? So, we are now at where? 54.60. It moves very quick. It's now coming up for 5 p.m. So we've got another four hours of the U.S. market being open. Now, in 2007, on the day that ISM was this bad, it was very similar numbers. 2007, the market finished down 3% that day, right? Are we going to finish down 3% today? It's only down one at the moment. So it's going to be very interesting to see the result. We'd be going down again tomorrow. We'd get all the economists come out and warn over the weekend. And don't forget, the chances are Iran is going to do something to retaliate over the weekend as well. People will not want to be long in the market for that. So be very careful over the next 48 hours of trying to buy the dip. Just be careful. Tighten that risk in, really take it down. Um, I bought volatility, I bought put options, um, I'm short the futures. This is not advice on what to do, trying to make sure nobody gets hurt out there and market commentary. Now in 2007 when we had the bad number of the ISM, the same day Caterpillar had a big profit warning. So Amazon or Apple, which one is today's bellwether of the market? It could well be Apple. Imagine Amazon or Apple have poor numbers tonight. What would happen to this? Do you know what shocks me in my own Russian people till this day? I moved back to Russia from the United States because boy knows the economy of, you know, the entire world is plummeting. But especially like my situation in the U.S. became really terrible, so whatever. But the fact that Russian people and people outside of the U.S. who've never been there still think that it's the country, like it's the shit or whatever, and they still think that it's like the dreamland of opportunity bothers me a lot because it is 2024. There are a ton of bloggers, Russians, Americans, whoever, who actually shed the light to the reality of being in the United States, especially being an immigrant, that the life is tough. It's not easy, and especially if you do not know the language. I mean, English is not Chinese. It's much easier and more accessible to learn, let's face it. Like, I, I'm, like, I, I can't really like, wrap my mind around it. I mean, it's one thing of me when I was 21 and I went to the U.S. being completely naive like, and did not know anything and having that false narrative in my mind either. Like, back in 2012, when YouTube was not that huge. But in 2024... Excuse me? Yeah. Yeah, interesting. I mean, granted, United States is great at advertising itself, you know? Nice package, empty insides, something like that. We weren't really saying the R word very much. Now, all of a sudden, we're saying it a lot. The big fear, today's jobs report signals the economy is in or about to go into recession. The weak payrolls and the rise in unemployment have hallmarks of the beginnings of those kind of downturns. It's too, cert it's too soon to say for certain, City says, but recent data could be the first signs of a sustained cyclical contraction in the U.S. economy, a.k.a. recession. The market now priced for a Fed that cuts rates seriously and sequentially as if recession were, a recession were imminent and confirmed. 
confirmed. Here's the amount of cuts expected, 1.25 percentage points just through January, and then two full percentage points. Remember, we're at 538 now, so two full percentage points about a year from now or so uh, down to uh, what would be 330 or so, which would be right around the, the uh, a neutral rate. Those kind of aggressive rate moves, take a look here by the Fed, are typically associated with recessions. The gray bars there, those are your recessions. Look how the Fed cuts just before after, by the way, hiking for quite a bit. And now we're looking to what happens on the right side, which was Bob Pisani's question. There is an argument that markets are overreacting. The jobs report is just one data point. Markets have long been wrongly forecasting a recession. And other third quarter data so far where there has not been much has caused economists to think we may be growing actually a little bit above trend this quarter, but there's scant data out there. What are you going to do to fix this problem with inflation? All right, thank you. Well, let's start with this. Uh, prices have gone up, and families and individuals are dealing with the realities of, of the, that bread costs more, that gas costs more. And we have to understand what that means. That's about the cost of living going up. That's about having to stress and stretch limited resources. That's about a source of stress for families that is not only economic, but is on a daily level, something that is a heavy weight to carry. So it is something that we take very seriously, very seriously. And we know from the history of this issue in the United States that when you see these prices go up, it has a direct impact on the quality of life for all people in our country. So it's a big issue, and we take it seriously. I really feel like I'm never going to get a job again. Like, I'm so scared because, like, I have been unemployed for three months. I'm not eligible for unemployment because I just moved here. Um, I am so stressed out. Like, this has never happened to me before. Like, I've always had a job. Like, I was an honor student, like, third in my class, so successful in high school and college. And I have a bachelor's degree in poli-sci. I have two years of experience in mental health. I'm a great worker. I'm so organized. But nobody will even give me an interview. And I was literally, I was crying on the phone with my mom because I was like, what if I literally can't find a job? Like, I've, I've been applying for months like I literally can't find anything like what am I gonna do like am I just gonna live with my parents for the rest of my life because like I'm not kidding you I literally cannot get an interview anywhere anywhere and I have applied to hundreds if not thousands of jobs in the past few months I literally don't know what to do like I am genuinely I'm genuinely so scared like, I really am terrified. Like, I don't know what is happening in the world right now. But, like, I am a good candidate. I don't, I don't know what's happening. 